Hi there, I'm Victoria Pete, and welcome along to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to sew the letter K, which is from my miniature alphabet foundation paper piecing pattern. Uh, it's a PDF pattern that you're, you can get from my website and you can download it, print it off and start sewing straight away. In the pattern you are getting all of the alphabet uh, in an uppercase um, style and you also get seven additional characters so you can create all sorts of words and phrases and um, you can personalize and do all sorts of bits and pieces with the um, with this the um, the other great thing about this pattern is it's compatible with the spools of thread uh, PDF pattern that I also have so you can create personalized sewing themed gifts and things like that so it's a really great versatile pattern so in this series of videos I'm um, showing you in real time how to sew each of the individual characters so that if you have happen to get stuck or you're not sure what you're doing you can watch and see how I sew in real time. As I mentioned today we're going to do uh, the K so let's have a quick look at the pattern we've got here um, this is um, all of the pattern pages look the same so um, we've got at the top we have a layout to show you exactly what the letter looks like we've got a blank uh, version of the block that you can use for coloring in or planning your fabric placement. We have an assembly diagram that tells you uh, whether the block is made from uh, one section or whether there are several. And this one here is made up of uh, several parts, as you can see. Um, you also have a difficulty ranking here. We've got a ranking out of three stars. This one's a two star. The piecing is really simple, but uh, you can see here how there are several different sections that you need to join together. We have the information here as to the uh, the order in which you need to join your sections together once you've made them. You've got a one inch test square here that you just need to check the measurements of when you print out at home just to make sure that um, it comes out true to size. If you are um, looking for accuracy and you're looking to join it into a different project, you need to make sure that you're printing out the correct size. All the different pattern pieces uh, that you require at the bottom of the page. Uh, you've got a um, each one has got a um, like a character that tells you um, which one, which letter you're doing. And all the pattern pieces show you which part are the colored sections. So looking back at here, which colored, uh, which are the colored sections and which are the background sections. So that's your pattern page. What I've done is I've already um, cut out uh, the pattern pieces. I've just roughly cut out um, around the outside of those dotted lines. And what I've also done is I've pre-folded. I like to pre-fold on all of my um, uh, pattern pieces. So um, we've got those. I'll put the pattern piece to one side for the time being. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make each of these sections. Um, but you can see here that there are three sections here that don't have any um, numbering on them. So they're just as one section. So what a, one piece. So what I've done is I've just taken um, a piece of fabric. I've pre-done these two, but I'll show you what I do with this one um, so that you can see. Um, and I'll do this one first and then I'll come along to the, the piecing of these. And then we'll talk about how we join all the sections together. I'm just going to zoom the camera out a little bit, not quite a long way, um, to give us a bit more space. So what I'll do um, with these sections that are made up of, of one piece only, I'll put a piece of glue on the reverse of this piece, and I'll do that all the way along. I'm using a, um, a glue pen. I'm using a prim glue pen uh, today. Uh, it starts off bright yellow, but um, dries completely clear. If you are using a patterned fabric, make sure that you're placing this pattern piece on the reverse on the wrong side of the fabric. But I'm using a solid here, so it doesn't really matter so much. And I'm going to push that down um, in place. And then I'm going to take my rotary um, cutter, um, my old one that I use for paper, and my acrylic ruler, and I'm going to trim that along those dotted lines. Actually, that first one I didn't cut very straight. I was being a little too hasty. That's better. Just trimming along the dotted lines to create a perfect piece. 
Okay, so that's what I've done there. And if I flip it over, that piece is now ready. It's complete and is ready to join onto uh, the other sections. Right, so um, let's move on and we'll start uh, attaching these um, or start sewing these as we would do in the normal way with foundation paper piecing. So um, we're doing piece number A and we're doing A1. One is a section that is pink. So we're going to start off with a, um, a fairly decent sized piece. I might just trim this down a little. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, and I'm going to place some glue behind section number one, piece number one. I'm going to place that on the wrong side of my fabric, or um, if you're using a solid, it doesn't really matter so much. Place that nice and centrally. I'm just making sure that I have enough fabric uh, to go around piece number one, around, um, an eighth of an inch into piece number two and piece number three, because we need that to join those sections on. But um, I also need to make sure that I've got here, let's use a green pen. Or, yeah, let's go for green. You need to make sure that your fabric extends enough because this piece here also includes this section and this section that form up part of the seam allowance of the block. So let's see. Maybe if I move the camera. Can you see here how I've just shaded in these sections? So you need to make sure that your fabric is big enough to cover those off. Okay. So I'm now going to fold back along the line between piece number one, uh, 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 number one and number two. And I've already pre-folded those, so that makes that easy to fold back. I'm then going to use my add an eighth ruler to trim off the excess fabric to create a nice straight line that I can use when I'm adding the next piece of fabric. So the um, piece number two is background, so we need a piece big enough to um, fill in this background piece plus the seam allowance around the outside edges. I'm going to place that at the top of this one. Just line up the two straight edges. And I'm going to pick it up and come over to my sewing machine. So I'll bring it over like this to my sewing machine, which I will turn on. And I'm just making sure that these raw edges stay together and I've not uh, left a piece of fabric behind or anything. And when I place this down, I'm just making sure that this bottom piece of fabric doesn't get folded or, um, or slips out of the way. Try and keep those raw edges meeting up. I'll then flip over my um, piece of paper and I'm going to sew through the seam allowance at each end and along that solid line on the pattern piece. I'm going to sew uh, with a uh, stitch length of one. Have a look on your machine and just see what, um, see what works for you. I'm hand cranking um, uh, the side of the machine to put the needle in the needle down position. And I do that slowly. I do have a needle down function, but I always like to do that by hand because it just gives me a little bit more control. So I'm going to sewing along the solid line. And we'll give that a press. Press it flat and then I'll just gently push away and give that a press. I'll take my rotary cutter and I'm going to roughly trim around the outside to release this part of the um, excess background fabric. And then we are looking to join piece number three. So fold back the line along the line between one and three. Use your add an eighth ruler to trim. And now we need a piece of fabric that's going to be big enough um, to allow um, this section here plus the seam allowance. So let's have a look, see if we've got enough in here. 
running that up. I'm just going to smidge across a little bit because this um, this piece of fabric here has got um, a bit of selvage. I'm just going to bring it across a little bit. I'm going to pick up all my pieces, come over to the machine, have it laid down, flip that back over, and I'm going to sew all the way through the seam allowance again. So this one is actually quite a nice, simple needle in nice quite simple um, piecing for this one nothing's too small nothing's too fiddly I've just graded it as a um, as a two star just because of all the the piecing of all the different sections so here you can see I've sewn through the seam allowance here and through the seam allowance on this side we shall press And we'll roughly cut. And then, as we did before with um, the rectangular sections, I now just need to go around and trim to that dotted line. Oh, I'm being ever so messy. Right. Let's trim. along the dotted line and just make sure that you apply even pressure on your ruler um, in line with the way you're going to cut just make sure your hands are keeping clear of the blade here we go so that's your first little piece and if I pop, turn these over we'll start to see how these come together what have we got? Got vertical. And this one comes in here. Right, so we'll do exactly the same thing with um, section B. So we need a, a pink piece for the middle. None of these pieces are quite big enough. Let me start with a new one. I'm just going to trim. Start with the rectangle. We give it a little press because it's a bit wibbly. Right, a dab of glue on the back of um, piece number one. It secures it in place. Remember to place this on the reverse side of your fabric. Fold back along the line between one and two. And I've pre-folded these, so that's nice and simple. And trim away the excess, which I'll save. That little piece might come in handy. You just never know. We now need uh, a navy piece. Let's see if there'll be some on that one. Touch that. It's probably not quite big enough. Let's go that way. So there's enough underneath to make sure that this piece will be covered. So pick that up, bring that over to the machine. Flip over the paper and I'm going to sew through the seam allowances. Not too far across. And so through the seam allowance. Along the um, straight, uh, the, along the solid line, and through the seam allowance at the other end. So you can see there, I've gone through at the top and through at the bottom. Should press. And I just, I always press flat first, warm it up a little bit, and then I, I push it over with my fingers, and then I press again with the iron. Um, I do like to, when I'm doing this, um, not for a tutorial, I like to let the fabric cool 
um, before moving it just allows it to set a little bit more roughly trim the excess off we now need to move on to piece number three I'll fold back along that line lift it up and we're going to trim off the excess pink here leaving an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we need some more blue uh, for this piece here so I'm probably not going to get any from um, this section we'll leave that for another time and we'll start on a nice big piece here there's the raw edges take that over to the machine flip it over and I'm just lining up the, the solid line with the line in the middle of my presser foot. And we go one end to another. Press flat. Pull it across but be gentle I say pull but I'm, I just mean um, sort of gently coerce it across and press it flat and then we're going to roughly trim around the outside edges pop that for another project or another uh, another section there we go so now I want to trim this one get my paper cutting rotary out lining up the quarter of an inch line on uh, this outside so, uh, outside solid line and the outer edge of my ruler lining up with the dotted lines I just find this gives a nice neat finish to each of the sections um, which is particularly useful if you're um, if you're joining pieces sections together there we go there's that one so that one pops in there so the last one we've got left is um, another nice and easy one uh, this is the the upright section of the K I think there's a special name for that I can't think what it is uh, so we need quite a large piece of pink for piece number one and then we'll need quite a large piece of the navy for piece number two so we'll start off with the pink a slick of glue just check I'm putting it on the right section I'm going to pop that on On here and then what I might do is I might just what I've done is I've made sure that that solid line when you fold it back has got um, about an eighth of an inch and I'm just going to trim the rest of this off roughly and get rid of that and then trim that down to an eighth of an inch to make that nice and sharp and accurate and then I'll add that to a piece of the navy Four edges matching bring it over to the machine and I've just picked that up badly so I just need to reposition those two there we go flip the paper over needle down and away we go Okay, I'll give that press and a trim, and then that is all of our piecing uh, piecing of sections done. Right, 
roughly cut. Pop that away for another one. And now let's trim along the lines. Try and be as accurate as you can. The more accurate, accurate you are, she says, tripping over her words, uh, the better the result will be when you're finished. Around. Rotating cutting mat is ever so useful in situations like this, but I just don't have quite enough room to fit everything in on the camera. So I'll just turn it around. Okay, so we have, here are all of our sections. So if we go back to the pattern, let's see. Um, so you can see on here, if I bring these up here and this one down here, you'll be able to see you've got your, um, oh, hold on, going the wrong way around. Here we go. So you've got your K uprights and your two angular pieces. You've got a top and a bottom and a side piece. So if you go back to the pattern page, it will say it says assemble as follows. A plus B equals AB. So AB are these two pieces here. So what we now need to do is join these two sections together. Once they're joined together, we'll join that to C and D and then we'll add E and F at the top and the bottom. So we're going to start off with A and B together. Now just make sure that you're adding the right parts of A and B together, i.e. you're joining these two parts and you don't accidentally flip them and join those two parts in that manner. So just watch what you're doing with those. I'm just going to slide these out of the way. When I'm joining pieces together, I like to use uh, glass headed pins, long quilters, glass headed pins. I find them really useful um, for foundation paper piecing joining sections. And the way that I use those is I will um, add, put my pin through the corners on the pattern, uh, on the sections. So I'm just gonna poke these in and then I will come back to you because I don't want to say, be really careful and then not be really careful myself and then get it all wrong. So what I've done is, and we'll try the camera coming in again. Let's see if that will focus for us. Oh, I'm hoping you can see. Come off a little bit. Can you see how I've just popped the pins in the very corner sections of the pieces? So I've done that on both sides on those. Oh, here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these together. I'm going to take the pin out of one, uh, sorry, the one at the back, and then I'm going to slide in the pin from the top piece. And you can see a little hole is left. So when you pull this pin out, you can see there's a little hole that you can then just slide this pin into. And what that will do is that will help you to align those points as sharply as you can. And it does help if you've, um, if you've trimmed these pieces uh, nicely and straight, you should find that these pieces will just drop in. And what you want, want to be able to do is have these pins in and for them to sit perpendicular through the pattern pieces and all the edges will line up. Uh, at this point, and I could do with a sewing clip, I tend to secure these because you obviously can't get that through the machine this way with the with the pin sticking out. So I will frequently just grab a sewing clip and clip that in place to hold it so that I can get to the sewing machine. So at the machine, I will then take out these pins and I will get the presser foot. Oh. 
Now, what you can do is when you are stitching these and you're not totally sure whether you've done the right thing, just increase your stitch length, length back up to a, a normal stitch length or um, a basting stitch, depending on um, what you're most comfortable with. And just run that stitch through. Don't go too fast. But go through and effectively baste those two sections together. And then you can have a look at that, open it out. And, and you can see here I've stitched and I can see that I've stitched all the way along that, um, that straight line. And if you flip it over, what you're hoping to see is that you've done the same thing on the other side is that you've stitched on that solid line so that when you open them out, you've got your A and your B the right way up. So you know that you've um, sewn them the right way. And when you turn them through this way, that you've got seams matching where they should meet. And when, you've, when you're happy with that, what you can do is you can go back and sew that seam again, but with a smaller stitch allowance. Um, working with the smaller stitch allowance will just allow you to take the papers out later. By basting them first, it just gives you that little bit of extra security because what you don't want to do is be unpicking um, unpicking your uh, foundation paper piecing because that's a real pain in the backside. And frequently I'll say to people, actually just sew the section again rather than uh, faffing about with uh, unpicking. So I'm going to give that a bit of a finger press first. Now, when you are joining pieces together, I always like to, um, this one's not so bad, but with um, other ones, you just sometimes you want to see which direction you want to uh, send your seam allowances in. Sometimes they go better one way than they do the other. So that one looks quite good. I'll give that a press. And this this goes back again to what I was saying about how I quite like to just let that cool to allow that seam to set because that likes to bounce back up, particularly with the paper in the way. That's your AB section. We now do need to join on the C section on the side. And we'll do that in exactly the same way. We'll use the pins, we'll um, poke those through the corners and we're going to sew along here. But what you'll see is that we've just got this bit of paper on the underside. So that if we sew along here, this bit's gonna get trapped. So I like to go in and take out the bits of paper from the underside because later on those become very, very difficult to remove. But I will just take out a little bit, the bit that would get trapped underneath the seam allowance that's been pushed to one side. So it still leaves this line for me to follow. I'm gonna stick pins in the corners. Oh, so stuck a pin in that corner and a pin in this corner. And then I'm going to do the same on um, this section. So pins in each of those corners. And I'm going to take the pin out from that side and poke in the pin on the top through the hole that was left and repeat the same thing. Take the pin out and pop this pin in. Make sure that they sit, those pins can travel perpendicular through the two pattern pieces. Take a sewing clip and if the, the seam is longer, you might want to use more than one sewing clip. Come on, let's go for two just for fun. And take that pin out. Replace it with the sewing clip and over to the machine. I'll then take that pin out and go underneath. Lining up the solid line with the middle of my foot. I'm gonna wing it. Am I going to wing it? Yeah, let's wing it and let's go for a, a short seam allowance straight away. So 
of sewn all the way along the line, which is along the line on the other side. And then when you open it out, you get your letter K. So, well, starting to form, we're not finished yet. So uh, actually, if I go back to the machine, um, you'll see, I don't know if you'll be able to see the, the subtle difference, is with the seam allowance, if you press it towards um, this AB section, I think you get a different effect. You see, you can see how this turn of cloth here starts to look a little bit bulky. If you push the seam allowance towards the C section, I think the turn of cloth just means that it brings this pink slightly further forward and it makes this junction a little bit nicer. So I would be pushing your seam allowance towards section C. Finger press and then press with the iron. Walkie logs and now we're going to add this little section on the side. Now these ones um, are not so difficult if you like and you're quite confident what you can do is if you've trimmed nice and carefully that should just meet up with the raw edges. Oh again let's just pop out this piece of paper on the other side because otherwise once that seam's sewn we're never getting it back out again and you don't want paper in your project. Let's take that one out as well. And then I'm going to sew from the top side because I think that seems going to be easier to follow. And the seam allowances are running in that direction so that when they come across to the machine, the seam allowances here are going um, in the uh, direction of travel. So they're not gonna get cut, caught on the underside of the, um, the foot. I'm going to go straight away. I'm not going to baste. And if we flip that out, there we go. And again, with this one, I think I would push the seam allowances towards the outside D piece because this is a little bit more bulky down here. It just sits nicer if that's pushing out that way. Wonderful. Have a press and then we're going to add the tops and bottoms, which is an E and an F, although I've realized that I've accidentally called one of them a D for some reason. But there's one E and one F, so one at the top and one at the bottom. Repeat the process on the back for removing your paper from the underside of seam allowances. And here you can use the, um, the trick with the pins again if you like, or you can do what we did with the last section and just pop that on the top, lining up your outside edges and your top edge and so so let's go for that making sure that everything stays nice and even I'm gonna go for a pin a uh, clip just to hold that whilst I get it under the presser foot lining up the uh, the straight line with the gap in the middle of my presser foot and so along 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 take out your sewing clip and that's the top of your piece so that just finishes off this upper edge nicely and now we're going to sew the final piece along the bottom oh we're not we're going to press first be good and the final piece along the bottom oh remove the paper and i'm just tearing off and leaving um, 
some of the other pieces because I find that it's easier, gives it that little bit of stability when it comes to joining um, this to other pieces, other sections, other projects, whatever. Let's go for another sewing clip because you don't want it going skew if. Let's put down, needle in. There we go, there's your letter K. It's cute, isn't it? It's super. So uh, there's, your, um, there's your letter K. Uh, it fits in with all the other letters and it will fit in to the spools of thread. So this will sit inside the middle of um, each of the spools. So you could create something lovely and personalized, a sewing themed gift that would be really, uh, would be lovely. It would be a really nice gift to receive. So in terms of the pages, here are the pages for your um, your pattern. Uh, that's available to buy and download on my website as a PDF. And if you wanted um, the spools of thread, that one is also available as an instant download so that you can buy and download and print off straight away for you to use. So that's it from me. Uh, if you've got any questions, do let me know. Make sure you sub subscribe to my channel and you will get uh, alerts when uh, I'm posting new videos. There will be videos of all of the letters of the alphabet. I'm doing them in a completely random order. Uh, so uh, just keep your eyes peeled. All the letters will be there, plus all the additional characters. I've also got other quilting and sewing tutorials. So have a look and see what's what. Drop me a line. Let me know uh, what you're sewing and what you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. See you again soon. Bye.